Alright, welcome guys back to another Monday News with Chibi No Podcast. You got me, David the Smash Fan. It's Monster Tech Guy. Mr. Mr. And we've had a lot of things going on this past week. And we just we have to just dive right into it. So let's go. I'll start first. So, um, as we know, uh, Endgame is destroying records here and there. And a big bombshell came, or big grade of news came out about three days ago, where it was revealed that Chris Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth, who is Thor, will be returning for Marvel's Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So he had, he was in contract negotiations, so that finally was um, finalized, and so he's going to be in <coughs> Phase 4. Now, this is huge news, and it, and although Disney has not confirmed what he's going to be in, it is, most people will think he's going to be, he's going to be a Thor 4, and a lot of people are saying he's going to be in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Now, the reason we say that is, again, spoilers, if you haven't seen Endgame, and Rooster Brothers gave us permission to talk about Endgame anyway, about the spoilers. After but, a week, yep. Yeah. That's true. But, but Thor, you see at the end of Endgame that he leaves with the Guardians of the Galaxy to space and what we theorize to go find this new Gamora from this alternate timeline who left somewhere. So it's going to be interesting if he's if he's in there and his antics, because he has a really good relationship with Rocket and... And I and um, what's his name? Sarl has a has a inferiority complex with Thor, so it's gonna just play. It's gonna be hilarious <laughs> if they keep him on. Like, what what are you guys' thoughts on on Chris Hemsworth being part of Phase Four now officially? Um, I'm excited. I think there was more to there was going there was more to do with Thor ever since Ragnarok because the other two Thor movies, as ever, all of us have stated, it wasn't the best. So I think with this one coming forward with this with the phase four and who the directors are for, for Thor is going to be or who we potential of it's going to be. Um, I feel like they're going to just have more story to, to give us with Thor and just make him grow as a character. And yeah, I'm excited about it. But you didn't like uh, Ragnarok? No, I said with Ragnarok making it better. Oh, I liked it. The other I two see. ones suck. I see. Um, yeah, after Ragnarok, it, it made kind of Thor one of my favorite characters out of the originals. Um, he's probably second to Iron Man after Ragnarok for me. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm really excited. I, I like the chemistry that they, he's had that with the, the, the snippets we've seen with him and the Guardians. So I'm really excited to see more of a big journey with them. So I can't wait. Yeah, it's, it's going to be awesome. So look out for that. Guardians of the Galaxy is going to start... Um, Filming, I think 2020 is when they said after he finishes with after James Gunn finishes with Suicide Squad. So we're gonna have to wait a little bit, probably 2021, 2022 before we even see Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which kind of sucks, but Makes it is what sense, it is. Yeah. 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 So, Mister Mister, what's what's next? Uh, we're gonna go to a topic that I've been, uh, I've been liking a lot. So, um, as people know me, I have become a shoe junkie, and um, Adidas announced. That they're going to be making the crossover with um, Pokemon, so that's coming into play. And the two shoes that they've shown so far that are going to be um, that are going to show the two main Pokemon. So there's the Pikachu <coughs> version, of course, and they have they're more of the traditional sneaker uh, sneakers from Adidas, like the Turtle Toe Adidas is the kind of style it is. And then uh, it's Squirtle is the second Pokemon they have. So it's going to be from children's to women and, and men in sizes. So you don't need to worry about finding a ridiculous pair for yourselves. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty happy. I'm not doing uh, the boost at all or the pods. No, no, nothing. Huh. Do you think they're going to be as pricey as as like the like Dragon Ball Z or Game of Thrones ones? I don't think they're going to be that pricey. I think they're more they're going to be aimed towards younger adults and younger kids, so they're not going to be as expensive. But I'm going to throw around a $70, $80 ballpark on the price. That sounds about that's right. What I, that's what I think is going to be. Just with the name of Pokemon in it, it's going to be $70, $80. Because I think the shoes in general, like the Turtle Toes, run 50 bucks. So a $30 increase for just the brand, like the name. I'm okay with it. I just wish it would have been a better shoe in my opinion, but it's fine. I mean, it looks cool. They're not bad. I like so, those sneakers. I'd rock them. They're here. Nice, nice. All right, Miles, what you got for us? Um, so as everybody knows, I'm a huge Star Wars geek, and um, it's been some really cool stuff in the fandom as of late. Um, so I know you guys all saw the S3 
SC38 um, clip that they had for the Star Wars, the Obi-Wan versus Vader. Um, that was incredible. I think it was like, God, almost five years or so these people worked on it. They're, they're called uh, FX It In Post. I, I will include a link in the comments, but they do kind of like these just kind of seems like this. But anyway, I thought the fight was incredible. Um, I, I think it worked great in like a fan edit of, of the film of A New Hope, just add that extra dynamic of the fight scene between Vader and Obi-Wan. And uh, what'd you guys think of it? To be honest, I didn't watch it, but I know. <laughs> wow. Dave? I saw it. I... I have, I guess, I have a lot of different views on how the fight could have been, could have gone. Again, we we can only just speculate because if we go based off novels, extended universe, whatever, like yeah, there's still not a lot of information to show how that fight went, and their interpretation of it was uh, seemingly Obi Wan had no chance to defeat. And I, I would have gone and maybe given Obi Wan a little bit more, like shine to show that Vader could still see him as a threat. That, that's just my whole thing. But overall, like, it was great quality. They, I don't know, they, they superimposed Obi-Wan's face over the actor. Is that, at least that's what it looked like with the FX team. And it, it was really well done. And the way that they incorporated it into the actual scenes from A New Hope, um, especially the whole part of, of Ben saying uh, to Luke, like, run or something like that, which, Miles, remember you told me that Star Wars theory when he saw it, he remembered that that was something in... A book or some other type of source material and he freaked out about that and i thought that was really cool oh it was um where he was taking his lightsaber um as a trophy so oh no it wasn't was really cool oh okay okay but yeah that but... I, overall i thought it was really good though okay and then just to add on top of that it's just the last thing with star wars is something i've been waiting for for a year and a half i've actually been a patreon supporter this guy spending over 20 bucks a month i don't know if i ever told you guys this um the youtuber's name is ivan ortega he's a professional film editor and he's been working on for the people that did not like the last jedi because i know it's very divisive um he's been doing some very professional edits and he is refixing the movie to cater the half of the fan base that didn't like the film which i'm on that fence as you guys know um he's doing some really cool things uh he just barely finished it he's going to do an extended version where it's going to add a fight scene at the end um, which is going to be really cool. The choreography and he's doing is amazing. He's really good at a lightsaber with him and his buddy. Um, so if anybody's excited, uh, just give some snips here. Instead of Luke throwing the lightsaber, he actually hands it back to Ray. He has a voice actor. It sounds just like Mark, and uh, he has some extra lines. Uh, Ray gets training in this one. He adds the morning scene of uh, ha Luke mourning over Han. Um, Akbar actually is the one instead of Holdo that does the sacrifice and he's done some CGI clip work. It is unbelievable the work this guy has done on this film for a year and a half. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. Um, some of the cheesy jokes people don't like are in there. Um, Ray's third training session is actually in this now. He's fixed some of the color contrast and audio fixes. He's added some music scores from uh, the originals into some of the fight scenes he's corrected the disappearing knife <laughs> against in the uh the throne room battle that uh, he's corrected that he's just gone above and beyond it's been a highly highly anticipated project and he just posted today that it is done so we're just looking to be released it so anybody that was a little curious to get a different take if they didn't like it this would be a cool way for you to check it out so now the real question is what will disney do when he posts this well, there's more than just him that have done fan edits. Uh, one of the other big ones is Hell 9000. They've been around for a long time doing the prequels and original trilogies, and they've done a Force Awakens. It's not, it's just a free project. He's not trying to get money from it. He's not publicizing for money for it. It's all free, um, and it won't be posted on YouTube, obviously. Okay, um, I'm just making fight. sure, like, I was making sure that he yeah. that doesn't get flagged or anything just because I'm, I'm pretty sure it will eventually get to YouTube, whether by him or by someone else. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, just uh, we'll leave a link to where you can see that on his website, right? Because he has a website where he'll post it up. Yeah, definitely. He has a lot of other great content too. But uh, I think one of the other things that you guys might have decided for is I know not a lot of people are a fan of Iron Fist. And he actually has a tattoo of the Iron Fist logo on his chest. Uh, he's a huge fanboy of Iron Fist. He's actually going to do after this project an Iron Fist collab of uh, season one and two and actually make a movie out of it and kind of fix some of the and fix and get rid of some of the scenes that weren't necessary and keep the pacing better because he wasn't a big fan of the Netflix series either. So he has some other stuff coming out after this. This has been a year and a half project, but other than that, yeah, yeah. So it should be should be really exciting for people that um, maybe didn't like the film, kind of 
help the fan base come together a little bit more. So, cool. okay. All right, so next piece of news is for me. So, um, Kishimoto, who is the mangaka for Naruto, he came out with his first chapter of his new serialization, which is Samurai 8, The Tale of Hachimaru. Um, I won't give too much away because I really think you guys should read this. It's about 72 pages, 75 with all the little like title page and all that. And uh, just to give like a general summary of it, it's, it's about this kid. Um, Hachimaru and it's a tale of him wanting to be or him yeah he wants to be a samurai he's a bushi right now and they'll explain what that is and and it's kind of like they're combining Japanese culture Japanese like Edo period mixing with science <laughs> fiction it's really interesting because they because there is a notable difference of how you can become a samurai and it's nothing like 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 through training or like the I guess the conventional means that you've known about samurai like there's an actual he changes how you become a samurai and it's actually really interesting um and because not just any person can become a samurai um so that's really cool uh I just want to report on that just read it it's 72 pages I believe it's gonna be coming out weekly um I think it came out um I, th I think it was last Monday I can't remember so there'll probably be a new chapter out this Monday I'll have to check but go check it out. Uh, you'll see, also obviously, his some things that remind you of Naruto, his art style, and some of the uh, things that you character see. So, uh, yeah, I'll take character designs. But yeah, go watch it. It's uh, go watch it. Go read it. The seventy-two pages. Um, it's free on Viz right now. The first chapter. I don't know about chapter two, but chapter one right now is free. So go read it on Viz uh, Media. Hey, a question on that. I, I remember seeing the, the just that sneak peek drawing a long time ago when it was advertised like a long time ago. Is the art style very reminiscent of the Naruto art design? Um, you can see it there, but like the main character, he doesn't he, he doesn't look anything like um, that that style. Uh, I guess he doesn't look anything like you would see. Like, oh, I, I, he looks like Naruto, or like like from the, from Naruto, he looks like this person. Like, so I really oh. like that Kishimoto did that that he didn't. You can see maybe some like resemblance, like the way that he does the hair and stuff. That like, oh, that's his style, but it's not someone like copy pasted like from Fairy Tale to Eden Zero. Like that one's completely obvious. Like he used <laughs> the same people, the same everything. But this one, it's it's a little bit more. Um, there's more variety in it. More like maybe like uh, when Dragon Ball Z started, and then like later in like Cell, it's like you can tell it's the same artist, but the eyes and nose have changed a bit. I yeah, like this that. this one he just has complete different different character designs like you'll see one that looks like one of the hokages just the way that the style is but you can be like oh that looks like hokage but it's not hokage like you could like that that's the way like you'll recognize his artwork his his style but you're not gonna be like oh that's exactly the third hokage that looks exactly like no you're not gonna see that cool i can't wait to read it yep so go yeah go read that all right mr mister let's let's hurry up a little bit what is next uh so they so from we got this covered website they said that uh beta ray bill is going to de debut in guardians of the galaxy volume three um so yeah that's what they're talking about because apparently originally beta ray bill is supposed to uh cameo in ragnarok because you do see a cameo of his uh space statue in ragnarok where he's like hulk is sitting yeah he's because he's a champion and that's originally where you would meet him and so they, this was just um they were just uh, discussing with the directors and people throughout Disney, and they're like, "When will he be um, appearing?" And then they said, "Well, he's going to be appearing." Well, they, they said he might be appearing in Guardians of the Galaxy three. And basically, they're just teasing he could be in there, um, but most likely, from what the sources are saying here, reading, he's going to be appearing in Guardians of the Galaxy three, which would be a good, good segue because in the comics and then in the cartoon, Thor meets him in space because his people are getting attacked, and then Thor gives him the power of a god and then he gets stormbreaker and that's basically what happens for beta ray bill so uh, this is a good cameo to it because of how it's, everything's setting up or a good yeah i don't know how they're gonna do this one because now <coughs> thor either thor will no longer need stormbreaker because you obviously in thor and ragnarok he can use his powers without the the without stormbreaker or mjolnir so i don't know if he's gonna create a new mjolnir or he get him a stormbreaker a and give the stormbreaker that he has to to beta rebuild he could create a new stormbreaker i mean it's a very big possibility but who knows it's just how they're gonna have, have to build it in the movies we're just gonna have to wait and see nice uh, i mean what's the what's our final piece of news 
Um, this one's just kind of for spoilers. I know it's kind of our last news so it's, it's set, so if anybody's kind of worried about this, it's going to go into Game of Thrones spoilers for the, the last episode that just aired, um, episode 5 of season 8. Um, I, this this topic I want to just bring up real quick of, I'd really like more of the audience, or I mean our listeners, sorry, comments on this and how you guys feel. I know there's been a lot of divisiveness in Game of Thrones, and I've been kind of having a love-hate myself. One of my favorite characters, if not my favorite, has been Daenerys. And um, her recent actions for seven seasons of build-up felt very out of place. And I just want to hear what your guys' comments think on what's happened in um, down below. Because to me, I felt it was out of character for her to just slaughter all the children and everyone and just go full Mad King or Mad Queen in this as an essence of, or this regards of her lineage, right? And I don't feel it was... I don't know. It just felt for plot wise they did it, but it didn't feel like it was earned because just the past seasons we remember one of her dragons killed a boy and then she locked up her dragons for it. But then next thing you know, now she's just slaughtering like mothers and children and the entire castle just to get the throne. And it, it just seems so out of place for a character for so many years of seeing her. So um, as cool as the episode was, I'm not too happy with what one of my favorite characters has become. It's but kind anyway. of funny. Um, cause I, I know all about this through Twitter and it's yeah. kind of split in the middle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. People are very like, why would she do this? But then there's a guy who shared a tweet on it. He says season one, she burns Miriam Masdur. Cause I don't, I have no confirmation of saying I can't confirm or deny season two burns the house of undying burns Astaper, crucifies the masters of Marine burns Marinzi nobleman burns Vaz Dothrak burns the wagon train. So this guy's saying like. Yeah, I mean, are you really surprised? Or are you not? I mean, I don't know because I don't watch it, nor do I care to watch it. But I mean, a lot of people are 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 citing on you, Miles, where they're like, "This was a, this was like so left field," and a lot of people are like, "Well, if you actually paid attention to the series, you knew she was going to be this way." So it's just no. it's very it's very split in the middle. I think from I, so it's, Twitter, you know. it's kind of intense. I will say this though: I know that Amelia Clark, who plays that character, she has been open about. Um, disapproving of her character's arc in this final season so I do know that she herself is not satisfied with what they're writing for her and it's it's funny because I, I think uh, Miles I think you're going to have to do a video about this where this is the whole thing about it just reminds me of finishing something well, no, it's about finishing something that uh, that doesn't have an ending yet kind of like the Full Metal Alchemist thing Full Metal Alchemist mm. the first series to me, is very divisive because I didn't like the way that they took it. Granted, the source material wasn't finished, so they had to take it their own way and make their own ending. And I absolutely did not like it. That's my hope. Some people were like, oh, but it got me hooked into the anime. It's like, that's great. I still think it was crappy. Brotherhood did it so much better because it followed it. So it's funny because this, you can now see like in a real, uh, in another um, genre where it's like, HB or whatever, whatever shorts on. It's from books, but the book never finished. So now the writers have to find a, an ending for it. And I'm just, it's gonna be interesting when he finally, if ever, finishes the book. If it actually is a lot better than what they're finishing this series with, the TV series at least. Okay. But, but yeah. Um, so well, quick, 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 quick thing. Um, somebody did like a joke on it. A meme. They this they said um, this is now you know how we anime folk feel when the when the anime passes over the manga. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess just because the show's been so rushed um, that the uh, for how she acted wasn't very earned because although she's done death, there's even though that guy posted that tweet, Diego, that so doesn't really. Um, if you were to watch those scenes, you know why she did it. She never really did anything out of like out of an ill intent, right? Um, she's always had a heart. I don't know. So it was a it was a switcheroo. So um, I'm on the fence. I didn't like what she did. I, I, the episode was okay. It wasn't bad. Um, I just wasn't happy with the writing of the character. I get you. That's all. I would, I would I, understand yeah. if somebody you see being yeah. portrayed this way and they do this to you. It's like, well, you chili dick me. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Ex I don't know exactly. Like I said, I don't never watch the series. I mean, I watch bits and pieces here, um, so I don't know what happened. I just know about like what happened between Jamie and fighting whatever her, his name is, um, how that happened, and about the betrayals and stuff. Again, I don't know all of it, um, but I'm pretty sure Miles once it's done, um, he wanted to do a review on the entire se season and then series of Game of Thrones to tell us how how it was because again i don't i don't think any of us have read the book have you guys or 
Uh, Heather's read the book. I've been talking to her and Jose about it a few times. So it'd be kind of cool to get maybe them on and do kind of a review because we, we were talking about it last night too and we, we were kind of mixed on how we felt about it as well. Yeah, have that done. So let's get that let's get that going. Uh, thank you guys for listening so much. Again, uh, give us a comment about how you felt about Game of Thrones last night um, or anything that we talked about today on Monday News. So signing off, this is David the Smash Fan. Smash your tech guy. Mr. Mr. And this is Chibino Podcast.